Welcome to Dave's new podcast. This morning I was chatting to my wife about uh, a series of books that she is reading at the moment about a character called Percy Jackson. They made a movie and I think they've just made a sequel. And uh, Percy Jackson is set in a world of Greek gods and Greek mythology and, uh, you know, battling evil in that sort of context, really. And my wife, uh, Lynn, was saying to me about how the Romans took the Greek gods and adopted them, but then also changed them, you know, brought in their own viewpoint on them, morphed them into the kind of gods they wanted them to be. So, for example, the Greek god of war, uh, they they adopted him, uh, changed his name, but also made him the sort of patron god of their city. And he became much more workmanlike and ordered and a figure to be looked up to, not just for war, but actually to kind of unite the city and everyone working together under him. The Greek name for the god of war was Ares, A-R-E-S. Quite sure how you pronounce it, but I think it's something like that. And uh, the Romans made him Mars, the god of war, and they celebrated him in what we now call March, the month that took his name. When the Romans adopted Christianity under the emperor, I believe, Constantine, they probably did the same kind of thing, really. The whole of the empire became Christian, and I guess that meant various things for various people, really, as to how much it was about following Jesus and how much it was a, adopting a way of life, how much it was just falling in line with what the, um, the Roman Empire told you to do. When the Romans adopted Christianity, my guess is they were very used to um, having images of their gods. So the icons that we have and the iconography and the, the visual imagery of uh, the Christian faith was not a problem to them. It had been a massive problem to the Jews who weren't even allowed to have images on their coins. Um, and so, you know, that, was, that would have been a big difference for the Roman version. But what it then, you know, led us to talk about is the, the unique and extraordinary thing about the Christian faith is that it exists in various forms all over the world in all cultures, or most cultures probably. And when you become a Christian, you do not have to buy into a certain kind of culture. Jesus began it when he taught the Lord's Prayer to his followers, and he didn't use the sacred language of his day, which was Hebrew. He taught them to pray in Aramaic, which was their ordinary, everyday street language. And when he did that, in a way, he liberated uh, Christianity to do what it is now, which is basically... Uh, it exists all over the world. People speak their own languages. There's no sacred language. You do not have to buy into a culture when you follow Jesus. You don't have to become like a certain group of people. In a sense, Christianity morphs to the culture and the people who uh, follow Jesus. And that's been the same for 2,000 years. And that is the extraordinary thing about Christianity is that it doesn't box you in. You follow Jesus as the person you are. You follow Jesus with the nationality and the language that you have. You follow Jesus with your personality, with your preferences, with your strengths and weaknesses, with your hopes, your dreams, your fears, your visions, your quirks, all of those things. Now it's not to say that in following Jesus those things don't get affected and changed in some way honed and worked on and all that kind of thing. That happens. But you're not boxed in. In fact, you could say it's the opposite, really. Following Jesus, the idea is that it opens you out, that it broadens you as a person, and that it takes you to places that you would never have gone if you weren't following him. Thanks very much for listening. That was Dave's podcast. <laughs>